Okay, so um, women who held revolvers on in these pictures I made myself, um, you can see the sun shines on me on my revolver. Um, when talking women in business, don't forget your revolver. And here's just like a quote from Audre Lorde about um, self-care as an act of self-preservation. Um, yeah, so what is a revolver? For me right now, I see a, a revolver as um, women that choose to live their lives through passion, to thrive off of passion and rebellion from um, certain ideas of who they are supposed to be. Someone who really, really inspired me is um, Dorothy Dandridge. She was a trailblazer. Um, she uh, beguiled um, the entire nation with her beauty, with her charm, with her talent. Um, she was the first African-American film star to be nominated for an Oscar. But um, not everything was easy. Um, being a beautiful black woman during her, during her time was not, the, was not um, an easy plight. And um, some might say that Dorothy Dandridge was conditioned to feel disentitled to humane treatment despite, despite her fandom, despite um, the glory that she experienced. She um, experienced a lot of harassment as a, like as a result of her um, as a result of her experiences. Um, when she was younger, she had to take down, literally had to take down her breasts when her body body started developing because um, her carefuls were fear, her carers were fearful of lustful attention that it would attract when she was working. Um, and to defend her from fears of industry, like industry. So like very early on because of her beauty, because of her womanhood, she had to repress herself, repress her development. And like this kind of abusive, invasive treatment kind of continued throughout her life. Um, and like, uh, yeah, um, so, Halle Berry, who played her um, in a documentary, actually said that Dorothy, Dorothy died from looking for love and affection in all the wrong places. Um, she was subject to abuse from lots of um, powerful white men. Like there was, there were certain situations in which she, in, it, despite the fact that she was the black woman, like that is supposed to be like in, in that time, like less less powerful. She was supporting um, the like powerful director she was dating. She, she was denied like marriage because of, obviously integration was difficult. Um, they drained, like she was performing in like all of the best places, but like she still got secondhand treatment like behind. Um, so these are all like, this is, this is all rocky terrain. It's hard, it's difficult. Um, but what I see in her, um, what makes me still, despite all, all of the, the sad experiences that um, surrounded her, what, what still makes me like look at her with like that, with that dazzle is she, she didn't have to be that. She took charge of her beauty, of her talent, of her, of the things that God gave her and she wielded that to her benefit. And I call that a revolver. When she didn't get a role that she wanted, she didn't take no for an answer. She dressed up as Carmen um, when she was meant to be um, a, like a different character and walked into the office and demanded that she be put as this character and, and she, she got the role. So it's just that kind of that self-determination despite, despite all of the horridness that is has been flung at her that ability to to just live in the moment and live in your passion that that is what makes that story so beautiful and an uprising and she and she paved a way for lots of women um to be who they are in like um in like the acting industry today 
Next up, um, Josephine Baker. I I love that movie. Um, this one is a this is a whole different ball game. So there's an Ashanti proverb from Ghana that says um, it is because of the beauty because the breasts are going to fall. So in other words, the reason why women conceal themselves is not out of practicality, it's because of the beauty. Why? Because people might take that beauty. Often people see something wrong with that beauty. It's like sordid. So I'm, I'm from like a um, quite traditional Nigerian household. Um, strict, in fact. So like when I go to Nigeria, I have to cover, 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 cover. Everyone's angry at you for your body. It's, it feels like that anyway. It's, it's like very similar to, to Dorothy Dandridge of like when she had to take down her breasts of like, there's something wrong with what's going on here. What I love about Josephine Baker is she did not take it. She just did what she wanted. Dance with bananas, okay, dance with bananas. She grew up um, in the South. Um, she st started into entertaining like from like a young age and then she sailed off to Paris um, in the hope of um, a different environment of, of new opportunities where segregation wasn't rife and like honestly I think anything was better better than the US at that point from like um, young entertainers who who, who, who want to live the best of life and don't want to be kind of um, oppressed in like a, a system that they they felt they were bigger than. Um, so yes, she 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 got to she came to Paris. She danced with bananas. She beguiled. She was African. She was exotic. She was unapologetic about her beauty. She 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 felt no shame. She amused. She um. Through she was so proud. She allowed people to bow down to her to the to all of her sensuality, which I think is incredible because it's subversive it breaks past any any parameters that people put put around women's bodies and like for me personally that's that's something that I need to see and I need to know and I just need to exist like that even though I'm I I, I walk out I walk out tomorrow please believe I'm putting on, on a lot of clothes I don't like what's outside I don't like the invasive pervasive male gaze but i uh, there's a big 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 part of me that just wants to run around free she didn't say that but <laughs> it's the truth um she was also uh, a civil rights activist in the u.s and in france she was she led the resistance she was a spy she um when she died she got um, a big dignitary um a big dignitary burial because she did a lot she was not just a beautiful figure she was a beautiful figure with with courage with with resilience with determination with intelligence with smart she navigated her way through all kinds of scenarios a true warrior and like that those those are the figures that i like to see that that's 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 the 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 things within me i like to channel and like, no, 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 channel, but like, I just see it and it just, it makes me want to drive forward. And I think what's so special about these women and all the artists that we've mentioned before is like with artistry, you, you, sh you share your courageousness with the world. And I think um, that's what Josephine Baker did. That's what Dorothy Dandridge, um, Dandridge did just through flying, just through, just through saying this world is for me and just allowing your spirit out. Yeah. Another one, Tina Turner. I loved the Tina Turner movie growing up. Um, and for me, I don't know. Okay, so it's, it's many different things. Obviously I like Proud, Proud Mary. I, I like what's love got to do with it. I, I like the whole story, but like one thing that um, I noticed because like, uh, Tina Turner was in an abusive relationship, obviously with Ike, um, and she was um, she experienced domestic abuse for years. Um, and the way she got into singing, what attracted her to the microphone, wasn't actually like the idea of becoming a singer superstar herself. She was attracted to um, Ike. She lusted him. She loved him so. Like she and he had this like competition where. Um, 
like in the club in like a club setting where like the, the, he would invite girls to come and sing on stage so she practiced and practiced and practiced in the hopes of coming to sing on stage to be with Ike and then that's how the love blossomed and obviously and then they had something so beautiful which was their art which was their um singing but then also a dark side which was the domestic abuse and the emotional all, all different types of just toxicness um and then one thing that I realized is like probably most likely what she was attracted to more so than Ike was the glamour and the glitz and the the, the performance that sharing that that's what shone out of her but, but then the lesson that I learned is like we as women we're often we're, we're better conditioned to chase after men than to chase after our ambitions so like for me like when I feel like if you're in a toxic if if you're in a toxic relationship or you find yourself with like a toxic person you just keep on going back ask yourself what does that person give you that you can't get yourself like if there's a list like if if what 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 is that what is in that person's atmosphere that they're providing you that you like so much because often it's that you're pursuing but but and we don't know that because we're more conditioned to chase after men than our aspirations so yeah like deeping that like as I'm growing up and seeing the story again it makes me like okay like cool like I I get it like I because I, I see so much of myself in these women like literally like they're my, my teachers and like that's the way I like like to look at black history I, I like to look at it as a lesson within myself because it's just community especially the black community is so beautiful because it's like we're family it's so strange we're just we just see each other and it's like family like anyway um yes so Tina Turner Tina Turner okay Shug Avery okay this is not real this is not a real story this is fictional but I really 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 love this character because she came into um, Cecily's um life and she changed it. This was an, a, a woman that was suffered abuse. She was small. She hid her face when she was smiling. She experienced a lot of pain. And then this big glamorous character comes in and she's a sinner. She does wrong. Her father's a preacher, but what does she do? She, she's, in, she's in the shack singing, thrusting, gyrating doing all the mess and it's such it's such a taboo thing then and it's such a taboo thing I'd say now like there are so many people that hate a Cardi B they don't want to hear her up they don't want to hear her twerk they don't want to hear any of that meanwhile this woman who's a sinner saves another woman saves another woman from a life of hurt and depression and low self-esteem and raises her up and that's that's the beauty that I see from re rebellion. Yes, you can be a sinner, you can be a this, this, that, but you can you can save yourself in a way that is that breaks free and dismantles all systems that try and keep you down and try and keep you in line. That's the beauty of rebelli rebellion and the beauty of revolver. And the reason why I feel like it's so relevant to have um, a fictional character is because in her story, as opposed to history the 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 story of the of the sinner of the of the rebellious woman is often rubbed away or it's oft, often distorted into something else so this Shug Avery character trust me you have an auntie that's like this you have a great auntie that's like this you have a great grandmother that's like this this is a story this is an archetype that exists with within us that re rebellious woman that is that is often tainted by society trust me those women are, are liberators um yes and that brings me to like the african femme fatale archetype this is an archetype that um is of like the disobedient the powerful the serious the troublesome the wise the playful the tough the seductive the sensual the fuck you to anyone that tries to tell me that i can't be who i who i want to be it's, it's about self-determination here and I think those images of those women stories of these women they're so essential they're so for our culture because it emboldens women to be to to, to do what they want to do next it emboldens it emboldens women to not fall within the lines of who they're told that they should be and to live according to a live a life according to who they think they should be because what is life if you're living according to somebody else's rules you have you, you're we're here to make our own print and that's what 
a revolver is to me to set that aspect of yourself free there was another woman um that held a revolver this this one isn't metaphorical this this one is actually um real she held a revolver and she revolted against slavery she is the epitome of a self-determined woman and much like several experiences i've had and many 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 women have had when she when she freed slaves she it, it, her accomplishments were accredited to a white man that dressed in blackface and i can't tell you the amount of times i've written a poem recited the poem and then some literally some guy it's always a man that tells me you didn't write that poem that you wrote why because it's good and it's it's that it's that strange strange phenomenon when you actually reach that like that that level of like in light of almost enlightenment euphoria it is it's almost like okay we can't say that you're not good enough so we're not we're, we're going to take it away from you and that's what they kind of did to harriet tubman but they didn't because she she aligned her revolver with the mission of god and she didn't she 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 saved people she fought she she was an activist up until the day she died she was i think 93 or 98 when she no, 93 when she died she died peaceful in her home so it's not a case where or it's not always a case where because you cho you choose to rebel because you choose to live your life outside the lines that you you're going to have a tragic ending it's it's within your power and you can choose that and harriet tubman is the perfect example of that to be whatever you want to be um yes and this is picture um a mural of harriet tubman holding her hand out um yeah and that's kind of uh, a mission of revolver thank you for listening to my revolver <laughs>